Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Big Bros Podcast. My name is Jeremy. Welcome if it's your first time joining us and I'm joined today by my lovely friend and co-host Ilan. How are you going, mate? Yeah, mate, I can't complain. Finished my thesis off last week, so that was a big hurdle that has been completed. So Congratulations, thank mate. You, thank you, thank you. That's awesome. We know how hard you've been working on oh, that. Oh, yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> shut up about it on this podcast, so yeah, everyone <laughs> yeah. I'm sure knew. Especially but, when we're talking about the burnout episode, that was a, a, a major theme of it, wasn't it? So it congratulations, was. Thank awesome. you, yeah, now everyone can... And everyone's now afforded the relief of not having to hear me speak about my a- academic journey. So yes, life exactly. is good. How are you? <laughs> good. As Drake says and Future says, life is good. Life um, is good. Yeah, I'm well. I've also, yeah, had another busy week and looking forward to wrapping up my final physiotherapy placements. The finish line is in sight. You know, I can see that degree of mine dangling at the end of the finish line it's only about six weeks until i'm all done and yeah i'm really looking forward to the summer ahead and opportunities melbourne summer melbourne summer that's right and uh opportunities on the horizon going into next year so it's an exciting time of the year just wish that the weather was a little bit better yeah but but you know what are we entitled to good weather are we deserving (laughs) of good weather well well, that's that's the question, isn't it? That's the que- that's the million dollar question that we are going to unpack. Not so much about the weather, but about entitlement in general, right? We often complain and we wish for certain things and say we need certain things, but is that entitlement? Are we allowed to feel that way? Should we feel that way? Let's unpack it. Well, let's define our terms because I feel like entitlement's a, f- a term that gets thrown around a lot, especially by like the older generation. Your generation is so entitled. Back in our day, we did this and that. And I think people sometimes... Back in my day, I was riding my donkey to school. I was, you know, going five kilometers through the mud and six kilometers through hay. But, uh, you know, you guys are taking public transport and driving your cars and you're still complaining. Yeah, exactly. So, hey, we're entitled, I suppose. But what does it mean to be entitled? Because when I think about entitlement, the way I would characterize it is this belief that by sheer virtue of you existing on this earth you are merited the things the lovely things around you you are entitled to more money without actually working for it you're entitled to a relationship even though you haven't gone out and pursued one or tried to better yourself so you can become like someone who wants who someone else would want to be in a relationship with it also means getting that promotion at work are you entitled for that promotion at work have you actually worked for it i think that's the clear discrepancy is have you put behaviors in place that actually merit you or are you just simply telling people that just by sheer virtue of you existing you deserve it yeah it's a good one because i think we think we're entitled to certain things if we see others on a similar trajectory to us maybe getting a certain something, whether it is that promotion at work or the girlfriend or, you know, that, that new position straight after university. Like I know that, you know, I'll, I'll look around sometimes and, you know, you you looked at, look at LinkedIn, for example, and you see this new person who's just got this new job promotion or this new person that's just been given this new job straight out of university. And you think, well, if they're getting all of that, then surely I could do the same or should be getting the same and i think that's the million dollar question especially if that person if you've got experiences with them or you know them as someone who actually didn't work that hard for it yeah or maybe they did but you didn't know it so in the back of your head you're telling yourself what the hell i worked way harder than this individual and they're yielding these rewards whilst i'm here you know battling away on linkedin yeah well exactly right and we're so quick to just compare ourselves to others so i think there's that link between entitlement and and comparison almost um but yeah i i've been you know i've caught myself doing that a few times like i'm scrolling through linkedin and i'm seeing who's getting promotions who's getting new jobs and i'm and i'm thinking well like how is that like that doesn't make sense to the in my opinion the person that i've potentially known them to be or who i think other people might be but i don't see other people getting those certain jobs or promotions and look I think this is 
a time where we just need to remind ourselves to not compare our chapter to someone else's or someone's chapter to that person's chapter because you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. That person might have busted their gut to get there or they might have essentially just been handed the job to them through a personal connection or it could be a family connection and you just don't know what the circumstances are and we're so quick to just judge these circumstances, aren't we? You're, you've hit the nail on the head because this is such a true point and such an important point for young people coming straight out of school into the big wide abyss where we have this perception of life that things might be easy. We've just come straight out of school where things are fair, fairly structured and things are provided for us. And I think naturally we sometimes think that if we haven't actually gone through hardship before, we're not going to experience such grave levels of difficulty. So when we do see people who are excelling or potentially being presented with opportunities, potentially you see people who, you know, you're waking up every day, working nine to five, you're straight out of school, but then you see people in your year level who never tried hard in school, who didn't work that hard, and you see them on a million dollar yacht funded by potentially, you know, a family friend or they're driving around daddy's car, you in- immediately start thinking, well, what the hell? Don't Am I not more deserving of that? Yeah. Why is it me who's busting my gut and this person is getting to enjoy all of life's greatest pleasures whilst I'm here hustling away? And what I'm here to say is that it's not always what the picture seems. It's not a, that accurate. It's not that black and white. Because you don't know the reason. You just said it. Maybe they are working hard behind closed doors, albeit a 19-year-old who can afford a million-dollar yacht at this age. <laughs> I mean, you've got to do a lot of cryptocurrency trading, and even then the market's not that good. But that's a very difficult thing to achieve. Yeah. But just broadly speaking, it, we're, we're very easy to, I think, down-regulate or rather discredit someone else's achievements course especially when we see ourselves in the shitter and we automatically just want to we either do two things we either tell ourselves that number one they don't deserve it and they must have some sort of you know helping hand that's enabling them to achieve what they want to achieve whilst i'm here busting my gut out or the second thing is we just say you know what like they deserve it more than me Mm. and those two ideas can be quite unproductive especially if you are someone who believes that you get what you work for and on that point about you know say that they were handed something to them whether it be a job or that car or you know a holiday whatever it might be so be it and if they're a person that's actually quite humble and acknowledging of that then credit to them correct absolutely credit to them i think it only becomes a problem or an issue rather if they're a type of person that wants to take credit for everything when it might not be there to to be had that credit. Like if it's, you know, essentially being given to them and they want to claim it all as themselves and their right doing, that's when it becomes potentially an issue or if they're flaunting it in a certain way and coming across as quite egotistical and, and arrogant about it, that's when people have problems and that's when people start to label that person as entitled, privileged, all of these buzzwords. But if they're actually a person who's quite down to earth, they recognize that, yeah, you know, like I'm quite fortunate and lucky to have been given what I've been given or um, been given this opportunity, whatever it might be. And it doesn't change the way that they treat you as a person, then go for your life and kudos to you. And I can only wish them the greatest of success and admiration because that's ultimately what it comes down to, the person's character. I completely agree with you. Um, I think it's just hard because as humans, we're social creatures and we always do social comparison. Yeah. And we always, always want to look for a way. And it. I think when we're younger, if we see that we're battling away and we're struggling with something and we're hating life, but we see someone else who is enjoying life and they're, you know, actually maybe on holidays whilst you're working and you're hustling, you, you might in the back of your head think, well, they're not deserving of it this is not fair i hate this mm. you know if though if they knew they could never endure the hard work i'm going through the problem there is it's like you might be right like you genuinely might be right there might be a bit of luck there but as you said so be it who cares who cares at the end of the day you are still having you still have way more control over your life than you think yeah. and that you have to remind yourself while you're hustling for the things you do we spoke about this a few episodes ago about working towards goals and, you know, not delaying happiness or rather 
not letting yourself only be happy once you've achieved the goal. But yeah. the truth of the matter is you have to remind yourself why you are battling there in the first place. Yeah. And yeah, we'll speak about all those things. But again, the danger there is that you're just not a pleasant person to be around if all you're doing is doing social comparison. You're looking at things negatively and you're thinking, far out, why do I have to work as hard and this person gets to go away to Europe for six weeks and you know be in bloody Chincatero and enjoying themselves eating pasta and I'm here just fucking hustling away at work and I hate my boss and I hate life. Yeah, I think, look, it's that type of character is probably you know, around in a lot of friendship groups. Um, we can probably think of that type of person that we know that is that, you know, not pick me type person, but woe is me type person and often comparing themselves to different situations and experiences that people might be having versus what they're having. And it's just not pleasant to be around. Like you said, no one wants to be around that type of person. And I think those are the type of people that come across as more entitled than the person that they are actually criticizing. And you know what's even funnier? Those people who are complaining, they actually might very well deserve what they're complaining about being that I deserve this and I deserve that. Maybe they have put in the work, but the impression they leave for other people is that that of negativity. The recency bias kicks in and the last conversation you had with that person, all they were talking about is how this person didn't deserve it, but they do. You're automatically just going to think, well you know, shut up, stop being so negative. There's actual, you know, you're naturally going to think, if you think your life's bad, look at the kids who are growing up in war-torn countries, who are growing up in poverty, yeah. the kids or people who have to live with terminal illnesses, and you're fine. Yeah, exactly right. And you know what? The thing is, no one you hear talking about criticizing other people and and belittling other people and comparing themselves to other people is probably working their butts off to get to that point anyway like if you don't have time for it no and exactly and if you're working your ass off towards a certain goal you're striving towards achieving something you're head down bum up mode and you probably only have admiration for the people that are kicking goals and doing the things that you aspire to get to one day and therefore like entitlement probably doesn't come through when you are someone that is hardworking and highly aspiring to achieve something, you tend to only see that entitlement come through when people think that things should just be handed to them because like you said, their existence or because they see someone else in their certain circle that is they believe of similar comparison to what they might be achieving and experiencing a certain thing. But yeah, like we said with that whole notion of entitlement, there are dangers to it. And one of those dangers being you're not going to attract people around you that want to be around you because no one wants to be around someone that's just comparing constantly and belittling and denigrating other people experiencing other other incredible things. But another danger of that entitlement is, for example, their erosion of empathy. You know, it, they're going to find it more difficult to relate to other people's hardships and obstacles in times of despair you know they're they're the type of people that are gonna always be saying like why me i hate what i'm doing i'm not achieving what i want to be doing or rather i'm doing everything that i possibly can but i'm not being rewarded and you know they're gonna lack that empathy towards other people and it's gonna shine through in the way that they're just talking about themselves and their situation it's true. Your empathy goes out the window. So does your ability to actually become satisfied with the things that you receive. It's the opposite of gratitude, right? You're not actually grateful for the things you're receiving because you actually want more. And something else I always think about is the whole idea of tall poppy syndrome. It's kind of yeah. rife in Australia, but we love to tear people down, oh. especially if they become hyper competitive. You look at a lot of the world, even the rhetoric, people are very hell bent on giving shit to the top 1%. And look, there might be genuine reasons why you do so, but I think, you know, I think people would be kidding themselves if they didn't acknowledge that the reason there's this hatred towards or resentment towards people who are hyper successful is because it's almost a reflection that they weren't able to achieve greatness or success or some sort of financial freedom. Mm. And that, you know, that forces a person to reflect and be like, well, you know, did I work as hard as I should have when I was younger? 
to get to a point where I am financially secure. Maybe I perhaps did make bad decisions. It's much harder to acknowledge our wrongdoings when, we, when we're younger and the fact that maybe we should have worked a little bit harder than it is to, you know, not shit on the person who is rich. Maybe you'd come up with rationalization saying, you know, they exploit people. That's why they're rich. They don't actually work that hard. Yeah. And you know what? You might actually be right. I'm not even saying you're wrong, but I think the whole messaging Jeremy and I are saying here is that it's not productive because, as you said, it is what it is. So, what can you do now? And I think adding on to that point is, okay, well, we live in a meritocracy. And what that means is you get out what you give. Yeah. And that means that you're going to get more things based on the amount of value you provide. A doctor's a great example. People, not everyone knows how to perform life-saving brain surgery, but someone who studies for 10, 15 years does. And they've sacrificed a lot. There's a reason they get paid that amount of money. It's because when something is scarce, their value goes up. The amount of people that know how to remove a brain tumor is probably less than 1% of the entire world's population. Therefore, you're going to pay more money for that. Yeah. And that's kind of a key principle of Western society. Whether Again, whether you like it or not, it becomes almost irrelevant because that's just the cards you're dealt. That's the rules of the game. Mm. So, the decision there is to complain and talk about how shit the system is. Well, we live in a free country, so you definitely can do that. But if you want to have more of a fulfilling and productive life, it might be worth evaluating whether shitting on the system and saying how unfair it is is your best course of action. Perhaps, perhaps it might be a little bit more useful to just accept it, say it's not a perfect system and find solutions of what you can do to better yourself. What do you reckon? Absolutely. And I think ultimately the people that are going to be shitting on the system and trying to find a way to criticize those people that are achieving those incredible things which we've spoken about are only the people that are either insecure about themselves or have that fear of not reaching their potential like it's a it's a desire that they have they have that desire to excel and to work towards something incredible but maybe their fear of failure or their fear of humiliation is enough to stop them from working towards achieving something great. So what are they going to do? They're going to beat down those people above them. You're not going to hear someone below you essentially admiring what you're doing so so nobly and so graciously if they've got that innate insecurity about not achieving what it is they want to achieve. So... I think that's just important to keep in mind that, you know, if you are one of those people that are achieving great things and you're hearing that criticism from someone beneath you, it's not a, it's not a reflection of you in that person who of like of gratitude and that person who is achieving something great. You should be proud of where you're at and why you are in that position. And you shouldn't feel, you shouldn't feel ashamed to be achieving something great. You shouldn't be thinking, well, am I deserving of this if this person beneath me is criticizing me? Because that person beneath you is only criticizing you because they probably wish to have been there and they're just not ready to put in the steps to actualize that dream of theirs. You hit the nail on the head once again. You could almost take it as a compliment if someone's giving oh, you hate course. because you're essentially doing a very implicit reflection of their own inade- inadequacies. Yeah. And truthfully, you might be, right? But the person who's below you and criticizing you if they're actually working hard and they're trying to achieve something, it's not in their best interest to shit on those above them. In fact, they'd want to learn from people above them. You mm. know, teach me your ways. You know, if you could be my mentor, can you please? Because if I can mimic your behaviors to be as successful as you, why wouldn't I do that? Sure, it might re- it might actually involve you dropping your ego. It might actually for one second admit that you don't know everything and that's yeah. fine and you're not supposed to but I think as humans we get so hell-bent on trying to preserve our ego on feeling like we know everything and we don't want to accept where our shortcomings are for, like look even I'm guilty of this as well I think though awareness goes a long way and every time I look at someone who might be you know in my line of field and I think, wow, they're, they're really, really successful. I try to stop myself from going down the natural path of thinking, well, you know what? They did something that screwed over someone else. Hence, that's why they're 
that hence why they're as uh, successful as they are. No, they probably didn't do that. They probably actually worked really, really hard. But even if they did screw someone over, as I said, it doesn't matter. It mm. doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's not going to be a productive thought for me. Yeah. Because the reality is I'm a huge believer of taking extreme responsibility for yeah. myself and for those around me. Exactly right. I couldn't have couldn't have put it any better. And I think it's a perfect message for younger people that, you know, if we're so often comparing ourselves, like we said, because it's just, it's natural as humans to do that, especially in our 20s when it's such a formative period of our, of our growth, we're going to be comparing our chapter to someone else's. And I think a nice way to navigate against that is asking yourself, what can I learn from that person? And maybe how can I integrate some values that that person must be instilling that's working for them into my life so actually rather than rather than denigrating them f- fresh off the bat and trying to criticize and pinpoint yo they must be doing this or they must have you know beaten down someone else to get there like you said turn it into a positive like we're so used to turning things into a negative and thinking that someone must have like done something dirty to get to a position of power no most of the time it's probably the opposite it's probably something pretty good that they've done to get to where they are so let's try employ that that mindset and i reckon it's bloody inspiring as well don't you reckon because if if someone's done what you want to do they've essentially paved the way they they've shown that it's possible Surely you take that as a bit of inspiration and think, wow, yeah. if they can do it, therefore I can. What's not stop? What's stopping me? Is it my work ethic? Okay, well, let's correct that. Is it my discipline? Let's correct that. Exactly. And look, entitlement, I think, is something that we often associate with money, with materialistic items, with status. We tend to, we tend to denigrate people that have that, have those materialistic items and, and values but I feel like we in Australia as well, and this might go in hand with tall poppy syndrome. We also think sometimes that people of certain status and power aren't entitled to even feel certain emotions. And I want to just explain that a little bit further. Like you often hear some people criticizing a sports person, an athlete that's spoken out about their mental health battles, the the anxieties they're feeling, maybe they're, you know, expressing that they're depressed and they want to take time away from the football club that they might be playing at and you always hear people on radio or you read read through comments on instagram posts or on facebook there's always a few people saying what do they have to be upset about what do they have to feel depressed about they're getting paid eight hundred thousand dollars a year they're not entitled to feel that way and that is the most ridiculous statement I hear. It actually it is boils disgusting. That genuine and sorry to cut you off. That actually boils my blood because on one hand, when you're saying that, you're saying to them that materialistic goods can essentially quell you for the most common human, like the most common ailments that can plague a human, which is your mental health. Yeah. Regardless if you're rich or poor, your mental health is part of you. It can it can be great at times. It can be really poor at times. That that really grinds my gears. Of course, but you know, it just makes me think like. We're so used to hearing about people saying that people aren't entitled to materialistic items, to money, to power. But in Australia specifically, I think it's one of our downfalls where we we often hear about, you know, people thinking that they're not entitled to feeling certain ways, feeling certain emotions just because of their their status and the money and the fame that they might have. And I think that's just, obviously that is disgusting and goes for, you know, it goes for itself without any explanation, but something to be mindful of. We should never, you know, denigrate entitlement just to to money and 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 because it's really prevalent when thinking about emotions as well. And notice how your empathy we spoke about it earlier, but your empathy just decreases for that person. Yeah, you're not validating them and their struggle. Sure, they might have more than what you've got. They might have a fancier house, a better car. They might have financial freedom. But what about the high performance pressures that they have on a day-to-day? The potential that if they get injured, they're going to be delisted and they lose their career. Mm. Whereas you might be an accountant, you can go to a different firm, you'll still have a job, but with them, what's going to happen? Potentially always being stopped in the streets for a photo. Sure, it might be a bit of a compliment, you're, yeah. you're big and cool, but what if you just want a private life, you, you've got family? The truth of the matter is everyone goes through their own shit. Everyone has their benefits in their life and perks. Unfortunately... 
some people are unluckier than others. Sometimes freak accidents happen. You get diagnosed with a chronic illness. That's shit. That's really, really tough. Well, me and you are in a really good position of privilege. We're healthy. We're happy. And even so, something that I do sometimes, and I know you do it as well, is when we really hate life, when we're really stressed with something, one of the biggest things I do is just remind myself of, well, I'm eating, I'm breathing, I can drink water, I can take a shower, you know, if I fail this assignment or if I, you know, don't get an extra hundred dollars from my next shift because I have to leave earlier, is that going to impact my life? Am I going to still be living? The answer is yes. You're already so much better than a large proportion of the world who aren't given those opportunities. And that can really help your perspective. And guess what else that builds up? That builds up your gratitude. Yeah. What you put out is what you will get back. I'm a massive believer of the law of attraction. Have you noticed anytime you've been grateful, you, it's not even that you've written in a gratitude journal, but you've just been like, you know, I'm really happy with life. There's a bit of momentum that builds off that. You find that other things in your life you would obtain and you're just happier for it. And I think... It's, there's usually a common trend. People who are victims or, you know, they might genuinely be victims, but let's say there's an individual who is always complaining. They're in a really good position objectively in their life. You know, they've got, they're healthy, they've got food, they've got water, but they're always complaining. Well, with me, they're that one friend in that group. Chances are they're always going to have some sort of circle of shit that keeps, you know, bringing them back down because they're always complaining. They're not grateful for what they've got. And I think gratitude it's one thing i know it sounds like we're all hippie and we're trying to promote you know meditating under a lotus tree and saying i'm grateful for this and that but which we are though (laughs) which we are why not (laughs) being grateful is one of the best antidotes for this because it actually on some fundamental level it makes you happier and it makes you a little bit more content but not content in the way that it makes you complacent because if you're entitled you might oftentimes just stop thinking that you need to work for something. Because again, you think just by virtue of existing, you deserve it. But someone who's not entitled, but knows the importance of hard work, they shift that mindset and they're also grateful. They're way more willing to keep working because and every time they suffer, they remind themselves it's part of the journey. And they also remind them, themselves that I get to go through this suffering. I'm in a position where I'm lucky. I get to go to school. I get to go to work. I get to see my friends. Not, I have to go to work. I don't have to, you know, it's not, I have to go to work. I have to go to go to school. I have to finish my assignments off. Just listen to the change in language. Yeah, that change in language, that shift in perspective, I think is the best way to stop feeling that sense of entitlement and to change that entitlement into gratitude. Because if we have that shift in mindset, then you're not going to have that woe is me mentality. You're going to have that mentality of, I've got an opportunity here and let's go out and take it with both hands and capture it. I love it. And the thing is, it's much better to earn things and actually get them. The The true feeling... Uh, look, I don't have six-pack abs. I think you do though. But the feeling of having abs is probably only made great given that you had to go through a lot of you know crunches that burnt your stomach. You had to avoid nights out where potentially you had to not eat you know, some of the foods that you wanted because they were too high in calories. But those sacrifices you made, the pain you had to go through then that would have accumulated, the byproduct of that is satisfaction when you see what you're able to achieve. Yeah, and that would therefore make you probably not feel that sense of entitlement because you know that you've put in the effort and you've got there and whatever someone wants to say to you will just fly by and it'll just be in one ear and out the other. So on that note, mate, we should wrap it up I think and um, yeah I think like you've just put it perfectly there and not much more needs to be said unless are we you want enti- to add anything are we entitled to finishing this episode have we worked for it I think we have so on that <laughs> note guys I hope you guys have a lovely rest of your Tuesday if you find that there's someone in your friendship group that may potentially benefit from this wink wink why not just send it to them because who knows you're their friend you want to do good by them so why not exactly exactly I, yeah, commend everyone on pursuing whatever academic achievements they're trying to pursue at this time in the year and for pushing because it is that stressful time of the year which we've been talking about in recent weeks. So keep going. We're there to tell you to keep going. And um, yeah, you're going to keep you're going to keep getting there and you're going to come out on top. So have a good week, everyone. Happy Tuesday. 
and we'll see you on the next one.